this is going to be the third video of antiviral series in this lecture we'll discuss with you guys the anti herpes pharmacology before we get right into the discussion i want you guys to know about the points which are going to help us to understand this lecture in a very easy way first of all i will tell you people about the replication pathway or the life cycle of herpes virus in this point i will discuss that how the virus is getting entry into the cell and then inside the cell it is replicating itself into multiple copies then how those copies are releasing out and going again to other cells and infecting those new cells so i will discuss with you guys the life cycle in a very simple and easy way now what is the need to discuss this life cycle or replication very simple if you guys know this life cycle or replication it will become very easy for you to identify the pharmacological targets now what is meant by this point very simple here we have the pharmacology the drugs those drugs where they're going to act what are their site of actions and what are the mechanism of actions if you know the site then it will be very easy for you to understand the mechanism of action in a very simple way so that's why first of all i will tell you people about the life cycle or replication and in this life cycle or replication my main concentration will be the pharmacological targets i won't go in the depth of this life cycle replication because we have already explained that life cycle in our first video so coming to the very first point the life cycle or replication is this virus finds a cell so this virus by means of its gp spikes glycoproteins it will bind to the host receptor now here is the host cell okay so this is having a receptor this virus by means of its gp spikes glycoproteins it will attach with this receptor after the attachment there will be the endocytosis this virus will get inside this will be internalized then as this virus enters the host cell this virus will undergo the process of uncoating what will happen then very simple we know that herpes virus is actually dna virus so this virus will release its dna into the host cell then this virus will move towards the nucleus and inside the nucleus it will integrate the host dna by means of an enzyme known as integrase now this integrase enzyme is actually of the virus so what will happen then then is both the dna will integrate now one dna will be synthesized or formed which will be the fused dna now you guys know this point very well that dna is responsible to transcribe into messenger rna then that messenger rna will come towards the ribosomes and then here that messenger rna will be translated and then what is going to happen after the translation very simple proteins will be synthesized now what will happen in case when there is a fused dna this dna will transcribe into messenger RNA. RNA, which will be the viral RNA, which will be having the message for viral proteins. What will happen then? This messenger RNA will come to the ribosomes here. It will be translated into proteins. Remember, these proteins are all those proteins which are actually required for a particular virus. Now, this herpes virus needs several proteins. So, these proteins will be all those proteins which are actually required for the virus. And some of these proteins will be DNA polymerases and RNA polymerases. These RNA polymerases and DNA polymerases will help in the synthesis of the RNA and DNA of the virus. So, what will happen then? If they are synthesized, very simple. Now, these proteins plus those genetic material, they will assemble together. As these proteins and DNA material are synthesized, what will happen? And then then these will assemble after the assembly there will be the process of packaging now in this step in the packaging step all those proteins and dna they will be packed in a way that there will be synthesis of multiple copies then then those copies will release from this host cell and then then those released copies will be free to go and find new cells and in fact those new cells so like this our discussion regarding the farm replication pathway with respect to pharmacological targets gets complete okay now let's come towards the pharmacology here in the pharmacology we have all those medication those drugs which are actually commonly used for treating the herpes patient number 1 is cyclovir number 2 Again, cyclovir, number three, formivirsin, number four, foscarnet. And now, let's come towards the very first one, and I will start our discussion from the acyclovir regarding the pharmacology. First of all, I will tell you people about the site of action of this acyclovir. Its site of action is DNA, viral DNA, not the host DNA. And now, let's come towards the mechanism of action, how it is going to interrupt the DNA synthesis, means how it is going to inhibit the DNA synthesis in short. Very simple, you guys know this very well. This is the virus, it is going to synthesize its DNA. 
What will it do? Very simple. It will just chain up nitrogenous bases like this adenine, cytosine, thiamine, guanine, etc. etc. will link up together, will chain up together, and they, at the end they will synthesize the DNA by means of enzyme DNA polymerase. Okay. What happens now if we indicate the A cycle to the patient? I told you people that it is actually an analog of the guanosine. What will happen then if we indicate acyclovir? This acyclovir will come and it will take the place of the guanosine. Now here is acyclovir. Acyclovir. This will take the place of the guanosine. So if acyclovir binds here, what will happen then? Very simple. Then the chain won't prolong. Means chain elongation will not take place. If chain elongation is not going to take place, then what will happen? Very simple chain termination like this the dna won't be synthesized now let's come towards the gan cyclovir again it is the same guanosine analog if we give gan cyclovir again it will come and it, it will take the place of the wild guanosine it will displace the wild guanosine it will bind over there and like this again it is going to terminate the chain prolongation so like this it is helping in inhibiting dna synthesis of the virus viral dna synthesis is going to be inhibited by means of these two acyclovir and gancyclovir now if these both are having the same mechanism of action then what is the need to use these both we must use just only one for particular treatment and the answer behind is very simple that is the side effects if we observe more side effects with one drug then we will switch to another one which is having less side effects that's the main reason behind it, okay now let's come towards the next one that is the formivacin it has got a very interesting mechanism of action it has got two sides one is during the attachment attachment site and the next one is the RNA synthesis so it is going to inhibit both attachment of this virus with the host cell and RNA synthesis so it is going to disrupt the RNA synthesis and the very one thing it is going to do is that it will inhibit the attachment of this virus to the host cell and the very second thing it is doing that if there is any RNA available inside the host cell of this particular virus it will actually destroy or disrupt that RNA so like this it is helping in inhibiting the life cycle of the virus the next one we have is phoscarnate it has got a very interesting job that is inhibiting both the dna and rna polymerase and we know very well that what are the dna and rna polymerase is doing very simple dna polymerase is responsible to synthesize the dna rna polymerase is responsible to synthesize the rna if there is no dna polymerase and rna polymerase then the case is obvious there won't be the synthesis of the dna and an rna so if there is no rna no dna what will happen then very simple case virus needs the dna and rna for its existence so at the end, if there is no DNA and no RNA, there is no virus left there.